All right, so what we've done so far is we've looked at kind of navigating around just in the 3D space in Maya, but I want to take some time and look at just the overall kind of a interface overview, this says, of Maya. There are a lot of different toolboxes and options in Maya. We're not going to use them all this semester, but we will cover the ones that you're probably going to use. So... The menu sets we talked about last last presentation where we had to drop down from the animation tab down to the polygon tab. And that's up here in the upper left of your, your Maya screen. And it's just that little drop down button. And almost the entire time we're in class this semester, you're going to be on the polygons drop down. The next thing are just the regular menus. And the menus are pretty similar to... Um, any menu in Microsoft Word or pretty much any software menu that you use. There's a file and an edit and then a bunch of other options. The difference between Maya and other softwares are that when you change your menu set here, what you end up doing is you end up changing your menu up top. Right, so you'll notice we've got edit deformers and create deformers and geometry cache and animate here and do the animation tab. If we drop this down to polygons where it's supposed to be, all of those go away and we end up with select mesh and edit mesh. And for every single drop down, there's a different set of menus. But again, we're mostly we're going to stay on the polygon tab this semester. Now there's also the status line and for the most part we're not gonna not really gonna use the status line too much this semester either but it's important to know that you've got a lot of tools available up here on the status line that you can use and as you get more in depth with Maya and more comfortable with the different tools we'll start branching out into the status line a little bit now the shelf we will be using a lot and that's pretty much any of these tabs right here are considered your shelf. And you have a lot of different shelves already preset for you in Maya. You have a general shelf, the curves, the surfaces, polygons, etc. The only one we're going to focus on this semester is the polygon shelf. A lot of the other ones are really useful, but for the purposes of this class, we're just going to look at the polygon shelf. Now there's also a panel toolbar, and this is where things get a little bit confusing because I could say click on the edit mesh drop down, and that's up here in the menu. But if I say click on the panel drop down, it would be down here in the panel toolbar. And when I'm discussing something in class or trying to give you instruction, I'm going to try to always remember to highlight my mouse so that you know where I'm clicking and what I'm talking about. But as I said last presentation, if I forget or if I'm going too fast, remember you can always pause the video and start it over and rewind. And if that still doesn't work, you can email me, ask me questions. Um, I'm pretty much available. The channel box is over here on the right side of Maya. And it houses a lot of information about the object you have selected. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more once we get into creating objects. But know if I talk about the channel box, it's housed over here. More importantly, if you don't have the channel box over here, if it's just a wide open screen and you're looking for the channel box, you need to come up here to the very top right button and click on that and it'll bring up your channel box editor. So just remember, it's just this button up here in the far right to bring up the channel box. As far as layers go, we're not going to use those right now, so I'm just going to kind of skip over it. We'll cover layers um, in a future presentation once we get a little bit more comfortable with Maya. Now Maya talks about the QWERTY toolbox, and this is where we're going to focus most of our time on this presentation after we start creating simple objects. But all of these QWERTY tools, the Select, Move, Rotate, Scale, and Show Manipulators tools, are pretty much 
all you use in creating really basic scenes. And, and we'll cover them, but you'll notice they have the hotkeys Q, W, E, R, T, and Y. Um, it's not entirely intuitive because rotate is E and scale is R. Those could have been flipped the other way, but it works really fluidly once you get comfortable using the QWERTY keys as hotkeys. Um, and we'll look at that. As far as the quick layout buttons, uh, we're going to stay away from those today. The helpline and everything else is, is less important. Those are all things we'll cover in a little bit more detail in the future. But I'm going to put this image up on the website so you can reference it. And now what I want to do is I just want to start working in Maya, just creating simple objects and moving them around. <clears throat> and what we call this is primitive modeling. And there's going to be a primitive modeling assignment, and we're going to have a separate video this week. Just I'm going to walk through creating the primitive environment, and then you're going to be required to create your own and submit that file. But first, we want to look at the primitive objects. We have a sphere. We have a cube. We have a cylinder. We have a cone a plane, a torus, and a pyramid, and the last one we use is a pipe. Now these are the primitive objects that Maya has available for you to start modeling from. And the general idea is you can turn these group of objects into any object in the world with just a little bit of time. Now 90 Probably 90% of the time, I just start off with a cube and turn it into whatever I want. But for the purposes of today, with primitive modeling, that's a lot more difficult. So we're going to try to incorporate all of the different objects, except for maybe the plane. Well, the plane can be like the ground, I guess. So we'll go ahead and make the plane really big. And we'll put it here on the ground. So what we need to look at... I'll just delete it. It'll be easier to see everything else. What we need to look at is the basic QWERTY tools. So Q on your keyboard correlates to this arrow selection, selection tool right here. So if you press key on your keyboard, you can select any object on your screen. You can't do anything with it except select it. But I like to treat Q as a quit tool. Because if I'm in the move tool and I'm trying to move an object around and I decide I really don't want to move it anymore, then I can hit Q and that'll break that'll break the tool open and I won't be able to move it anymore. It'll just it'll just quit the tool. Um, and that's really beneficial because there's a lot of times for beginners when they're working in Maya that they're in a tool and they're trying to do something else, but they, they can't do it. Just remember to hit the Q tool and select, and that will help you to quit the tool that you're using. The next tool we want to talk about is the Move tool, which corresponds with these three translating or sliding cones right here. And you can either click on this tool, and it brings up what we call a moving widget, which has a red arrow, a green arrow, and a blue arrow. Now, the red arrow will move your object in the X direction, which is generally from, I guess, right to left. Right? So we move it right and we move it left. The blue arrow will move it in the Z direction, which is generally front to back. So if we click on the blue arrow, we can move it front to back. And then the green arrow, we can move it up and down. And you'll notice that whichever arrow you have selected is highlighted in yellow. Um, and that way it, it just helps you to recognize the direction that you're moving. And that's pretty much the move tool. Now if you want something to be on the ground, you'll notice it's kind of hard to line it up exactly with the grid. Um, for this project, we're just going to line it up as close as we can and move things around into the location that we want. 
So don't worry too much about getting it exactly the right height. But if you want to, you can always click on one of these side views, the right or the front, and that'll make it a little bit easier to try to figure out exactly where you are on the ground. So we've talked about the Q key always gets you out of whatever tool that you're using. The W key moves things around. We're going to look at the rotate tool next. And the rotate tool is really easy to see on the cube. And you'll notice you have a green line, a blue line, and a red line, and also this great big yellow circle outside. You need to make sure you stay away from using this outer yellow circle to rotate anything. That's just, it gets confusing and it's hard to keep up with. You want to stay focused on either rotating it in the X direction excuse me, rotating it in the Z direction or rotating the object in the Y direction. You do have the option to click in between the, the locked rotating angles, but again, that creates a lot of confusion and it's really hard to get your object into a position that you want that way. You generally want to rotate it using just the primary rotating angles. Now what we haven't discussed yet is the undo key. You're probably noticing that I rotate it and then I just, it rotates back to zero, zero, zero. And that's just using the undo key, which is very similar to every other software. It's just the Z key. You can hit control Z but you are only required to hit the Z key. And it will undo whatever your last action was. And if you look down here, you'll notice that on the command line, it tells you what your at last action was. So if I, hit un if I hit Z, this says undo select cube one. And what I do, I select it and I hit Z and then I undo the selection. Um, that's just kind of an easy way to keep you up to date with where you are. Um, if I know that I rotated it three times, then I can undo three times. And then if I get back to the deselection, I can always come up and redo the select, which would be Y. Control Y. I did not want to do that. All right. So. We've gone over the Q key again, which just cancels out whatever tool you have active. The W key, which moves. You can move in the X direction, the Z direction, or the Y direction. The E key, which rotates, and you can rotate in the Z direction, the X direction, or the Y direction also. And the undo key, which lets you just undo whatever you did, the same as other softwares. The next thing I want to look at is the scale tool. <clears throat> and on your keyboard, this is the R key. And I'm going to work with the cylinder over here. And I'm just panning and kind of rotating my view around. And when you bring up the scale tool, you notice it looks very similar to the move tool. And this is the move widget. This is the scale widget. It has a red box, a blue box, and a green box. And if you grab any one of the boxes, you'll notice you can scale it in the, just the Y direction, in just the X direction, or in just the Z direction. Alternatively, you can click on this blue box in the middle and you can scale it in all three directions at once. Which is useful if you wanna make it a lot wider and shorter, you can scale it up in the global direction and then scale it down in the Y direction. But that's pretty much the primary tools. You've got move, you've got rotate, and you've got scale. And then the Q key always quits whatever tool you were using before and defaults back to the selection tool. Um, so that's move, rotate, and scale. There's also a widget here, which is called the Universal Manipulator. 
and it houses the rotate key and the move tool and the scale tool all in one um, manipulator but it gets so confusing because there's so many different um, tools here it's easier for most people just to use the move rotate and scale separately and that's what I would recommend you to do because it's just generally a bad idea to use this universal manipulator it just gets confusing <clears throat> and again Q always quits so that's the basics of manipulating things. Now what I want you to do, you may have noticed that when you are creating a polygon, it's asking you to um, click and drag on the grid, right? So you click on the grid and you can drag it out and then you can drag it up. That's one way to create it and that way works just fine. But if you notice what I do, if you go to create polygon primitives and turn interactive creation off, then you'll just be able to click up here and it will automatically create a default sized object in the middle of your world. And then you can manipulate it and move it wherever you want. So again, that's create polygon primitives and you wanna make sure that interactive creation is checked off it just makes things a lot easier for me and and for most people because it takes a step out of the creation process if you have any questions as always you can email me uh, otherwise uh, look out for the next video and it will be a primitive modeling demonstration and you'll base your project on that demonstration thanks